Anime commercials have always had a, an essence of just weirdness. And Dragon Ball is certainly right there. The eyedropper commercial, KFC Goku, the Ford one. Look at that stylish exterior. I, I generally thought this one was fan made when I first saw it. However, the one that sits the highest on that podium is this thing. This art is something that came into your life, sat down beside you, put its arms slowly around your shoulder, and before, before you could even open your mouth, they were gone. No explanation. And that was my initial impression of the Dragon Ball Z Mets ad. Without context, I honestly thought this was a parody. The drawing style looked hardly anything like Dragon Ball, and the animation had an oddly fluid motion for Dragon Ball. And all the meanwhile, Goku is doing windmills and Frieza was putting down the craziest, hip-busting moves I've seen in any anime. Okay, Space Dandy probably takes that trophy, but, but you know, this is pretty up there. And so eight years later, here we are. Who made it? Should we praise him? And why does it look so different? Well, that takes us back to 2015. 2015 was quite a journey. A year that felt like yesterday, but, but really isn't. Anyways, for the new movie, Revival of F, there was a beverage company by the name of Kirin that wanted a collab. The offer was accepted, and so the idea was for people to buy and submit shipping labels from four specific soft drinks. From that, your name would be entered into a draw, and if you were one out of the lucky 2,500 people picked, you got a freezer bath towel. And if you were a group of another 2,500 peoples, it would be a Goku one. And then if you're in the final 100, you would get a set of the sacred Quo cards, worth a total of 35,000 yen. Which sounds like a lot, it isn't. Although it's still worth more than the old beach towels. However, the staff weren't going for something basic. It, it wasn't someone with red eyes for the third time or, or Goku just saying yo while holding a greasy drumstick. And yep, that's it, wrap it up there. They went the extra mile and contacted a professional dancer to choreograph the whole thing. And since then he's got MTV Japan Awards and all, all sorts of stuff. Even if you feel indifferent to this whole thing, you can at least respect the ambition for a, a 15 second soda ad. Now, I don't know exactly who in the office suggested it be centered around dancing. Maybe someone felt inspired after watching Vegeta and Battle of Gods. Or they were one of the two people that enjoyed the Para Para Brothers skit in GT. Either way, it's by far the main reason people even remember this commercial. And by bringing on Uano, it was a guaranteed way to do it right. Outside him, the other two who had a big part in pulling the rest of it off was the director Tadashi Sukagoshi and animator Takashi Morita. Either of these guys had worked on anything Dragon Ball before, which already explains why it's just so aesthetically different to like everything, both past and present. Although Tsukagoshi, the director, had been drawing Dragon Ball since he was in elementary school and called Akira Toriyama his artistic master, or at least that's how Google translates it, he just seemed to be pretty happy to work on something related to one of his childhood favorites. Morita, though, I, I don't think he had. Now, in terms of drawing experience, he was fine, more than fine. He'd been around for about 15 years at this point and worked on many famous titles. Naruto, Jojo, Gintama, Code Geass, Gurren Lagann, Black Lagoon, and Toei series like One Piece, Saint Seiya, Procure, Sailor Moon, all the big stuff. He's a very skilled animator and it's a little odd that his debut on Dragon Ball was on, on this and not for say the movie it was advertising. It's even more strange again as it had been the standard for decades and still is to this day to usually have Dragon Ball's more experienced and most important animators to handle commercials. Back in the day, you had guys like Sato, Maeda, Yamamoro, Shida, Shimanuki, and in later years, Otsuka, Suji, and Yamamoro again, although usually the latter was in a supervisor position. So it's an unusual choice, but makes sense considering a lot of those names mentioned would have been busy on either the movie or Super. Anyways, the actual drawing quality is inconsistent to say the least. There's some nice art here and there. I definitely love how sharply he draws faces and hair instead of that rounded look to the designs of this time period. Reminds me a bit of the uh, the cell arc. The thick line work is also pretty different and the poses and layouts are solid, but the black shading, while a fine aesthetic choice by the director, Morita kind of poorly places it at times or just simply puts too much of it on the faces. 
And instead of the usual tightly packed proportions of Dragon Ball faces, the mouth sits down very low, is long instead of short, and the face shape in general is longer. Besides that, the animation is fantastic. Some of the loosest character animation you'll find on Dragon Ball. It's very likely Morita directly referenced the live footage that Uono had choreographed with a group of other dancers. Make no mistake though, being able to translate those moves over to animation and while animating this many characters at once is no easy feat. And that especially goes for the Freezer one. There's like 21 characters on screen at one point, like insane. It, it still hasn't been confirmed with the Freezer ad who animated it. Morita only mentions working on the Goku one, but, but man, it's good. In terms of direction and storyboard by uh, Sukagoshi, it's also well done. For the two commercials, he bases the color design around the flavor of the drinks. Simple, but smart. There's also some fun details like Vegeta ignoring everyone at first then quickly hopping in or when everyone powers up Roshi goes into his buffed up mode. Unsure why the colour of Tien's clothing changes, now colouring accidents are, are definitely not uncommon. Could honestly find a million and one examples whether Z or Super. Although miscolouring his whole fit, that, that takes effort. Anyways, that's all I had. Everyone I mentioned seems to have a lot of fun putting it together. And now you also know some unnecessary lore about a weird Dragon Ball commercial. With that, please check out the sponsor Fandom Eon to support the channel or support me on Patreon. And shout out of course to everyone over there and to Sol Binku and the High Roller class. And with that, thank you for watching and I'll see you later.